Good morning. Welcome to God's house this morning. We are already at the first Sunday of a brand new church year. Today is the first Sunday in Advent. The themes of the end of the church year meld very easily into the themes for the beginning of the church year. And you'll hear words this morning, echoes of judgment, especially in the Old Testament lesson when Isaiah calls on God to tear open the heavens and come down. And so this morning we reflect, what might it mean for God to come among us? Welcome to all of you and welcome from wherever you are joining us. We are so glad that you're here with us this morning for this worship service. And we pray that what you experience this morning may be a blessing to you, feed your faith, and, and serve to equip you for your life in the world. I want to say a word of uh, thanks to those who are helping with the service this morning. Tom Tuttle taking care of technical matters. Carol Omernick, who has uploaded resources to the website to assist you in worship. Linda Petrushka, who is sharing a word with the children. Edie Madsen, who is here serving as our lector. And our musicians, Greg Beam leading our song from the organ. Judy Jackson, who will be leading the psalm and assisting with the singers. And our singers, Lyle Amundsen, John Skogsbakken, Sandy Sinis, and Cheryl Becht. May God bless our worship service this morning.
Our families are recording the lighting of their own home advent wreath in their homes, and those recordings will then become part of our service this morning. There's a call and response reading that they're going to be using as they prepare to light the advent wreath, and the response each time is, we're ready. And so we invite you, as you watch this family lighting their advent wreath, that you also would light your own Advent wreath at home and join in the call and response. We're ready. Go. Church, oh God, are you ready? We're ready. Are you ready to meet the Lord? Church, oh God, are you ready? We're ready. Are you ready to greet the Lord? Church, oh God, get ready. We're ready. Get ready and wait for the Lord. Those who wait for the Lord shall renew their strength. They shall soar like wings, like eagles. They shall run and not be weary. They shall walk and not grow faint. Let us pray. We praise you, O oh God, for this evergreen crown that marks our days and preparation. preparation for Christ's advent. As we light the first candle on this wreath, Rouse us from sleep that we may get, be ready for the Lord. When he comes with all the saints and angels, enlighten us with your grace and prepare our hearts for, to welcome him with joy. Grant this through Christ our Lord, who is coming in certain and those days draw near. Amen. Ow. You burnt me. <laughs> you burnt me. And we light the first candle yeah. of the Advent season.
The grace of our Lord Jesus Christ, the love of God, and the communion of the Holy Spirit be with you all. And also also with with you. Let us pray. Stir up your power, Lord Christ, and come. By By your your merciful merciful protection, protection, awaken us us to to the threatening threatening dangers dangers of our our sins, sins, and and keep keep us blameless blameless until the coming coming of of your your new day. For you live and reign with the Father and the Holy Spirit, one God, now and forever. Amen. A reading from Isaiah. Oh, that you would tear open the heavens and come down, so that the mountains would quake at your presence, as when fire kindles brushwood and the fire causes water to boil, to make your name known to your adversaries, so that the nations might tremble at your presence. When you did awesome deeds that we did not expect, you came down, the mountains quaked at your presence. From ages past, no one has heard, no ear has perceived, no eye has seen any God besides you, who works for those who wait for him. You meet those who gladly do right, those who remember you in your ways. But you were angry and we sinned. Because you hid yourself, we transgressed. We have all become like one who is unclean, and all our righteous deeds are like a filthy cloth. We all fade like a leaf, and our iniquities, like the wind, take us away. There is no one who calls on your name or attempts to take hold of you. For you have hidden your face from us and have delivered us into the hand of our iniquity. Yet, O Lord, you are our Father, We are the clay, and you are our potter. We are all the work of your hand. Do not be exceedingly angry, O Lord, and do not remember iniquity forever. Now consider, we are all your people. The word of the Lord. Thanks Thanks be be to to God. God. Israel, hearken from your throne and shine forth. Oh, rouse your power and come to save us. Lord, make us turn to you. Show us your face and we shall We are your chosen vine, only by your care do we live. Reach out your hand, O Lord, unto your people. shall live anew in your love. Oh, shine upon us, great Lord of life. Lord, make us turn to you. Show us your face, and we shall reading from 1 Corinthians. Grace to you and peace from God our Father and the Lord Jesus Christ. 
I give thanks to my God always for you because of the grace of God that has been given you in Christ Jesus. For in every way you have been enriched in him, in speech and knowledge of every kind, just as the testimony of Christ has been strengthened among you so that you are not lacking in any spiritual gift as you wait for the revealing of our Lord Jesus Christ. He will also strengthen you to the end so that you may be blameless on the day of our Lord Jesus Christ. God is faithful. By him you were called into the fellowship of his Son, Jesus Christ our Lord. The word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. The Holy Gospel according to Mark. Glory, Glory to you, O Lord. Lord. Jesus said, In those days, after that suffering, the sun will be darkened, and the moon will not give its light, and the stars will be falling from heaven, and the powers in the heavens will be shaken. Then they will see the Son of Man coming in clouds with great power and glory. Then he will send out the angels and gather his elect from the four winds from the ends of the earth to the ends of the heaven. From the fig tree, learn its lesson. As soon as its branch becomes tender and puts forth its leaves, you know that summer is near. So also, when you see these things taking place, you know that he is near at the very gates. Truly, I tell you, this generation will not pass away until all these things have taken place. Heaven and earth will pass away, but my words will not pass away. But about that day or hour, no one knows, neither the angels in heaven nor the Son, but only the Father. Beware, keep alert, for you do not know when the time will come. It is like a man going on a journey when he leaves home and puts his slaves in charge, each with his work, and commands the doorkeeper to be on the watch. Therefore, keep awake, for you do not know when the master of the house will come, in the evening, or at midnight, or at cockcrow, or at dawn, or else he may find you asleep when he comes suddenly. And what I say to you, I say to all, keep awake. The Gospel of the Lord. Praise, Praise to you, O Christ. Christ. And now here's Linda with a word for the children. Good morning. I'm so glad you're here with us today. You heard earlier in the service today Miss Lynn and Reagan and Kinsey remind us to be ready. Be ready, be prepared. Well, when you see an empty stable like this, this might have you be thinking about <clears throat> being prepared to celebrate God bringing Jesus to us as a little baby. And maybe you might recall the empty tomb when the stone was rolled away reminding us that Jesus is coming again. And we never know when that time will be. But either way, it's time for us to be prepared. What can you do? Pray and talk to God? Be helpful. Give and be generous. Listen and comfort. And thank God every day for Jesus. Be prepared. Be ready. Oh, that you would rend the heavens and come down. Wow. What a powerful phrase, huh? It's from the first lesson. It, it sticks with me. It's so very vivid. It's a violent image, actually. The kind of scene that you might see in Hollywood's latest disaster flick. The heavens being torn open, ripped wide open, God coming down. The prophet who wrote those words somehow believes in God's power to save, but sees little evidence of it. And so in poetic, metaphorical language, he asks God, where are you? What are you doing? And then the prophet goes on to beg God to act. Come, come so that everyone will see it. Come, come with power, even with violence. Let there be no mistake about who's coming. 
Come, make some noise, put on a show, fireworks and spectacle. And if some people get hurt, well, that's the price you pay to show that you're God. Although in not such strong language, still cataclysmic language, Jesus seems to promise the same thing. A big show at the end of time. Christ will appear in a way that no one will miss it. And so Jesus' warnings are about being ready. You don't want to be on the wrong side when he comes back. So watch for the signs. When the leaves pop out on the trees, you know that summer's around the corner. When the plumber's coming to get rid of that clog in your drain pipe, you better stay awake because you don't want to be asleep when he knocks at the door. While the lessons point us to cataclysmic scenes that we are supposed to imagine. It doesn't really take much imagination, does it? We've seen our own scenes of violence and cataclysm on our televisions the past six months in Minneapolis and Kenosha, scenes of utter devastation about the wildfires out in California and Oregon and Colorado and Washington, not only destroying property and memories and essential ecosystems, ecosystems, but taking the lives of our fellow human siblings. I talked this week with a friend who lives in the Florida Keys. His entire summer and autumn has been consumed in being prepared for one onslaught after a hurricane after another. When will it all end, he asked. And then this week, I read an article by a black female theologian who teaches at Union Seminary in New York City, one of the most reputable seminaries in American church history. And she wrote that she's having a crisis of faith. After a lifetime of believing in Jesus, she wonders out loud, what good does Jesus have for me when my black skin ensures that I will be accounted among those who aren't as human and who do not have the same worth as those with white skin? The brokenness of the human community becomes personal and touches me profoundly when I talk with so many of you who know the fractures in your own lives. Relationships that you have entered into with dreams of happiness and fulfillment have become places full of burden and tension. Diagnoses of illness mean sometimes a change of life and sometimes the expectation of death. Ongoing treatment of disease that seems not to bring a restoration of life, but only putting off the inevitable. And we look around us and we see the changing landscape of the church and the difficulty of trying to be church in this time of pandemic. And we discover that the church that many of us knew and loved doesn't exist anymore. And we want to cry out to God, just come, just come. Come and show us what to do. Show us what it's supposed to be like. Show us what it's supposed to look like. No wonder we're tempted to join ours with the prophets and demand that God at least show up. Well, what would happen if God showed up as Isaiah suggests? What would happen if Jesus came back in the clouds with great power? When I hear those words of judgment, it honestly doesn't sound much like good news because I'm afraid that Jesus would find me under the same judgment as the rest of humanity, infected with sin to the very depths of our hearts, broken, harboring bitterness and hatred, keeping grudges, so easy, so eager to judge those around us for the very attitudes and behaviors we so readily accept in ourselves. We. And those around us, just like those of the prophet's tribe, like those of every human being who has ever walked the earth, are in need of grace. We are the people who need to be saved. We are the people who who need God to come to us in a different way, not on the clouds of judgment, but in a gentle whisper of invitation and love. We read today from virtually the end of Mark's gospel. But at the beginning of Mark's gospel, Jesus' baptism is where the skies are parted. 
the heavens are torn open, and the voice from heaven proclaims Jesus as God's beloved. And at the end of the gospel, when Jesus lies hanging on the cross, dies hanging on a cross, the curtain of the temple is torn in two, and the Roman soldier, the Gentile, the pagan, looks upon Jesus' broken, bloody, and dying body and says, truly, this one is the Son of God. By the time we get to the point in the gospel where Jesus utters the words from our gospel lesson today, Jesus has already entered Jerusalem. While the world is looking around at the skies for God, Jesus slips in, God slips in, almost unnoticed. And see, that's the thing. God comes to us in the moments and the places where we least expect it to bring exactly what we need. God comes on a cross to bring redemption. God comes in a word of absolution to bring forgiveness. God comes in a handful of water on the head of a tiny baby to bring the gift of the Spirit. And in this word, in this moment, God is coming to bring renewed faith and strength for the journey. In this community of God's faithful people, God is bringing companions for the journey, people who love us and support us and walk with us and work with us. Jesus is coming. He cuts through all our misplaced expectations and all of our questions about where God is to say God is here. I am here with you always. There is nothing you can do, nothing that you can create, nothing outside my own death and resurrection, nothing outside of my unconditional love for you. Those are the things that will bring you life. And so today on this first Sunday in Advent, this first Sunday of a new church year, Christ Jesus once again offers something new, something real, something rare. He offers us life. And he creates out of us a community of life. The tender touch of the loving potter is shaping us and molding us day after day and sending us back, not to Minneapolis or Kenosha or Portland or the mountains of California or the hurricane-ravaged Gulf Coast, but to Ellison Bay and Sister Bay and Bailey's Harbor and Ephraim and Fish Creek and all the places where we live and work. You see, God will not come to those places through the cataclysmic tearing open of the heavens. God will come where the world least expects it. God will come through us. Amen.
together with the whole church, we confess our faith. I believe in God, the Father Almighty, creator of heaven and earth. I believe in Jesus Christ, God's only Son, our Lord, who was conceived by the Holy Spirit, born of the Virgin Mary, suffered under Pontius Pilate, was crucified, died, and was buried. He descended to the dead. On the third day, he rose again. He ascended into heaven. He is seated at the right hand of the Father, and he will come to judge the living and the dead. I believe in the Holy Spirit, the Holy Catholic Church, the communion of saints, the forgiveness of sins, the resurrection of the body, and the life everlasting. Amen. God of power and might, tear open the heavens and come quickly to this weary world. Hear our prayers for everyone in need. We pray for the ministry we share in Christ's name. Open our hearts to your call for justice, peace, and healing. Attune us to the needs of the world as you draw near. Hear us, O God. Your mercy is great. We pray for this planet in need of restoration, for devastated habitats, polluted waters, thawing ice, blazing fires, swelling floods, and long-lasting droughts. Renew the face of the earth and our relationship to it. Hear us, O God. Your mercy is great. We pray for all people who care for others in our community and around the world. Fill them with compassion and the power to respond with justice for those who are oppressed, with welcome for those who are excluded, and with relief for those who suffer. Hear us, O God. Your mercy is great. We pray for people who are in crisis as the seasons change, for those without homes facing severe weather, for those who are unemployed or underemployed, for those in poverty or facing food insecurity. Relieve their burdens, sustain their bodies, and ease their minds. We remember especially those whom we name aloud. Marjorie, Marjorie June, June, Don, Don John, John, Julie, Julie Terry, Terry, Gary, Gary Robin, Robin, Clink, Clink and Sharon, Sharon, Irv, Irv Kevin, Kevin, Bill, Bill Patricia, Patricia, Stan, Sue, Sue Will, Will, Connie, Connie Jody, Pat, Pat, Eric, Eric Gordon, Gordy, Don, Don, Dolores, Barbara, Barbara Marilyn, Marilyn, Adeline, Rita, Rita Ron, Ron, Phyllis, 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 and all whom we remember in our hearts and lift before you. Hear us, O oh God. Your mercy is great. We pray for the people in our families and congregations who live with depression, anxiety, chronic pain, addiction, and other invisible illnesses. Ease their suffering and support them when they struggle. Hear us, O oh God. Your mercy is great. We give thanks for the lives and witness of those who died while waiting for justice, peace, or healing, those whose names we know and those whose names are known only to you. Sustain all who still yearn for the completion of your redeeming work. Hear us, O God. Your mercy is great. Receive our prayers in the name of Jesus Christ, our Savior, until that day when you gather all creation around your throne, where you will reign forever and ever. Amen. Amen. This is the time when we would receive our offering, and we thank you for your continued support for our ministry. We bring these gifts out of gratitude for all that God has done for us. And as we begin this new church year, we pray God's blessings on these gifts, that they might serve the needs of others. Let us pray. Generous God, you have created all that is. You provide for us in every season. Bless all that we offer, that through these gifts the world will receive your blessing. In the name of Jesus, Emmanuel, we pray. Amen. 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 Gathered into one by the Holy Spirit, let us pray as Jesus taught us. Our, Our Father, Father, who art in heaven, heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy, thy kingdom, kingdom come, come thy, thy will, will be done, done 
on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom and the power and the glory forever and ever. Amen. The creator of the stars, bless your advent waiting. The long-expected Savior, fill you with love. The unexpected Spirit, guide your journey now and forever. Amen. Amen. Go in peace, prepare the way of the Lord.